The Harry Potter films had so many details and so many characters from the books, but one character that was seriously underused was Kingsley Shacklebolt. He was briefly in the films, but had very little lines. Although he did have one line that's one of the greatest lines in the whole series in my opinion, which wasn't actually even in the books. You may not like it, Minister, but you can't deny Dumbledore's got style. I've seen a few people who have only seen the films not even know his name, which is just sad because he's a great character. In this video, I'm going to do what the films could not and explain the life of Kingsley and try to give his character justice. Now this is based on the books, not the films. There's a big difference and a lot of facts that differ. Now let's get started. Kingsley was born into the Shacklebolt family in the mid-1960s. The Shacklebolt family was a part of the Sacred 28, a list of the most prestigious and 100% pureblood families that stayed pureblood over the span of centuries. Kingsley grew up in the Wizarding World and was taught basic skills like math, writing, and reading by his parents. When he turned 11, he got his Hogwarts letter, and before going to school, he went to Diagon Alley with his parents, a place he was very familiar with after being immersed in the Wizarding World all his life. While in Diagon Alley, he got his wand from Ollivander's and got his robes and books for school as well. When he went to school, it's unknown what house he was sorted into, but if I had to guess, I would say he's a Hufflepuff. And I think this because he values hard work, is dedicated to his career in school, he always does the right thing, and is very humble. All traits that Hufflepuffs tend to have. While at school, he met James Potter, who was a few years older than him. While in school, he became an exceptional duelist, and became the top of his class in almost every subject. He was able to create a Patronus earlier than most, which took the form of a Lynx, and when it came time for the test that 7 years take, the NEWTs, he scored all outstanding and exceeds expectations, the two highest grades on at least 5 of them. Getting these grades ensured that he could start his career as an Auror, or a Dark Wizard Catcher for the Ministry of Magic. He was trained as an Auror, and everyone was very impressed with his skills. By the time he graduated, the first Wizarding War was just ending, as James and Lily Potter died 4 years after they graduated, and they were about 3 or 4 years older than Kingsley. Because of this, he did not get a chance to join the Order of the Phoenix, or have much experience with Death Eaters, the Dark Lord's followers. After the war ended, Kingsley worked his way up in the Ministry Auror Division, and over the years, he became one of their most high-ranking Aurors, and was trusted to go on the most important missions. His dueling abilities were not his only asset. He was also very cool-tempered, but was always ready to strike when needed. Came off as very trustworthy, and was great at blending in, especially when blending into the Muggle world, something that most wizards struggle very heavily with. He was tall, black, bald, had broad shoulders, and had one hoop earring. The combination of all these things made him intimidating but reassuring, and his deep calming voice made him trustworthy but stern. Right before the second Wizarding War started, Kingsley was put in charge of the Ministry's hunt for Sirius Black, an escaped convict from Azkaban. Shortly after that, however, Harry Potter and Albus Dumbledore claimed that Voldemort was back, but almost the entire Wizarding World, especially the Ministry of Magic, claimed that this was not true. Kingsley, a straightforward man who looked at the facts, realized that all of the clues pointed to this being true, and that the ministry that he worked for was wrong. Dumbledore restarted the Order of the Phoenix, but this time around, they had to do it in secret. It was extremely hard for them to recruit people who worked in the ministry, as Arthur Weasley and Tonks were all Order members, but ministry employees as well, and they did not want to lose their jobs by blowing their cover of being in the Order when trying to recruit other ministry employees. They were able to get Kingsley, however, and he became a real asset to the Order. When he first joined the Order, he was introduced to the very man that he was tasked with hunting down, Sirius Black. But after Dumbledore explained to him how Sirius was innocent and why, he embraced Sirius as one of the good guys, and immediately started pushing the Ministry's hunt for him in the opposite direction, saying that he was in Tibet. He along with Tonks and Arthur Weasley fed the Order information directly from the Ministry to help prepare them for the threat that both the Ministry and Voldemort and his Death Eaters posed. While at the headquarters for the Order of the Phoenix, at number 12 Grimmel Place, he got to know Sirius and Remus, and the three bonded over knowing James Potter. Having never met his son Harry, Remus told Kingsley how much he looked like his dad, and how great of a flyer he was just like James. As a new member of the Order, he spent a lot of time at the headquarters, most of the time coming to give reports, but when he did come, he would often eat meals with the group, which made him get close with all of the members. Kingsley was later part of a team comprised of Order members led by Mad-Eye Moody to transport Harry from the Dursleys to number 12 Grimmel Place. This was not easy, however, as he had been accused of underage sorcery and therefore was under the watchful eye of the Ministry, so they had to fly their brooms to get him there. 
When they got there and Kingsley was introduced to Harry, he said to Lupin how right he was about how much Harry looked like his father, and he went on to tell Harry that he heard he was a great flyer. When Harry went up to pack, Kingsley along with Sturgis Podmore were examining the microwave, very fascinated by the muggle invention. While Mad-Eye was briefing them before they left, he said, Don't break ranks if one of us is killed. But Kingsley assured Harry that no one was going to die in his deep, calming voice. They flew back for a long time, Kingsley and the other Order members flying and moving around Harry to make sure he was protected. One day, when Kingsley was at work in the ministry, Rufus Scrimger, another ministry employee, began asking him and Tonks funny questions. Scrimger was the only one in the ministry that saw that something was up with them. On the day of Harry's hearing for using magic outside of school, Kingsley asked Arthur if he could have a word, and the two acted as if they had never met. When Harry started to say hi to Kingsley, Arthur stepped on his foot before he could, as not to give up their cover in the order. When they went into his office, Kingsley had his entire wall full of pictures and newspaper cuttings, all with Sirius's face on it, along with the map of the world, in which little red pins were glowing like jewels, representing where Sirius had presumably gone, though most of those were wrong, as Kingsley was throwing the ministry off. When they stepped into the office, Kingsley shoved a bunch of papers and a magazine into Arthur's hand and asked him for as much information as possible on flying muggle vehicles in a harsh tone, saying that they suspected Sirius was still using his old motorbike, which was of course completely false, as Hagrid now had it. He gave Harry an enormous wink and lowered his voice to a whisper so that only they would hear, and added in a whisper to give the magazine to Sirius, as he might find it funny. The article said that Sirius was actually Stubby Boardman, the lead singer of a wizarding band called the Hobgoblins, who retired years ago. Kingsley then raised his voice again and demanded that Arthur not hold the investigation up like last time when they were dealing with fire legs. Arthur kept the charade up and argued back, correcting Kingsley that it was not fire legs, but fire arms. And Arthur then lowered his voice and told Kingsley that he was invited to dinner at the headquarters and that Maldi was making meatballs. When Kingsley went to the headquarters that night, he arrived not just a sit-down dinner, but a little party, celebrating Ron and Hermione being chosen as prefix. Kingsley, however, did not agree with Dumbledore's choice. He thought that Harry should have been chosen instead of Ron. He explained to Lupin that Dumbledore should have made him a prefect because it would have shown Dumbledore's confidence in Harry, something that Harry desperately needed, with so many slandering articles being written about him in the Daily Prophet. Lupin told Kingsley that Dumbledore must have had his reasons, though, and Kingsley agreed. Kingsley continued to work for the Ministry and for the Order, which for a while was easy. But when the two were brought together during the school year, he got caught in a sticky situation. After Harry had been caught running Dumbledore's army, the Minister for Magic, Cornelius Fudge, thought that Dumbledore was running it and thought that he planned to use the army to overthrow him and become Minister himself. Fudge brought Kingsley and another Order named Dawlish with him to arrest Dumbledore. They met Umbridge at Hogwarts, who said that she had proof of Harry and Dumbledore's treachery. Her proof was a student named Marietta Edgecombe, who had ratted Harry and the group out. But when no one was looking, Kingsley took the opportunity to modify Marietta's memory. This made it so when Umbridge asked her about it, she denied everything that she had previously admitted to Umbridge. This made Umbridge angry, and she grabbed Marietta and began shaking her very hard. This made Dumbledore immediately raise his wand, and made Kingsley's large and intimidating body step forward, making Umbridge release Marietta right away. Kingsley said in his deep, low voice that she should calm herself so that she doesn't get herself into trouble. Umbridge looked up at the towering figure next to her that was Kingsley and said that he was right and that she had forgotten herself. When Dumbledore covered for Harry and confessed to running Dumbledore's army, Kingsley and McGonagall looked at each other, both with fear in their faces. Harry shouted out, desperate not to let Dumbledore take the blame for what he had done, but Kingsley flashed a look of warning at him, letting Harry know that Dumbledore had a plan. Fudge later ordered Kingsley and Dawlish to arrest Dumbledore, and Kingsley, not wanting to blow his cover, did as he was told. However, Dumbledore knocked Kingsley and everyone else in the room out except for Harry and McGonagall. When Dumbledore, McGonagall, and Harry remained conscious, Dumbledore said that he felt bad for knocking Kingsley out, but said that it had to be done to not raise suspicion, and went on to say that he was impressed with Kingsley's quick thinking to modify Marietta's memory and asked McGonagall to thank him on his behalf. He then vanished with his phoenix fox, and when Kingsley and the others woke up, they did not know that time had passed and thought that they had merely been knocked to the ground for a second. Fudge immediately yelled, asking where he was. Kingsley shouted that he did not know as he leapt to his feet. Kingsley followed a stupid Dawlish, who thought that Dumbledore had gone down the stairs. Kingsley knew that this was not the case. Even so, however, he had to keep his cover and go along with it. Kingsley had successfully helped save Harry, Dumbledore, and the Order of the Phoenix, all while keeping his cover as a Ministry employee who was still loyal to Fudge. 
A few months later, Harry, Hermione, Ron, Ginny, Neville, and Luna went to the Department of Mysteries only to be led into a trap, meeting a group of Death Eaters who were after the prophecy about Harry and Voldemort. When Kingsley along with Sirius, Lupin, Moody, and Tonks were at the headquarters, they were informed by a worried Snape that the kids had gone missing, and the five of them went to their aid. They all arrived just in time to save the kids, and a huge fight broke out between the Order and the Death Eaters. Kingsley single-handedly fought two Death Eaters at once, ensuring the safety of the kids and helping the Order's chances of winning. Kingsley later fought the Death Eater Rookwood, covering Harry as he ran with the prophecy to get himself and Neville to safety. Sirius was later killed by his cousin, Bellatrix Lestrange, and as he fell through the veil, Kingsley ran forward to continue Sirius's duel with Bellatrix. Being an Oyer who had been in the field many times, he knew he had to keep fighting on, even though his heart was heavy as he lost one of his friends and soldiers. He however kept his cool and fought the much more powerful Bellatrix. Because Bellatrix was more powerful than him, however, she got the upper hand, and Kingsley fell to the ground, yelling in pain. Even so, Dumbledore arriving ensured the Order's victory, but Voldemort and Bellatrix escaped. Kingsley went on to make a full recovery, and one good thing that came out of that night was that Kingsley no longer had to live a double life, going back and forth between the Ministry and the Order. Voldemort was now confirmed to be back, and the Ministry now worked alongside the Order. Rufus Scrimger replaced Fudge as Minister for Magic and as Kingsley's boss. A year earlier, he was the only one able to catch on to Kingsley and Tonks' double agency with the Order. He was much stricter and much more competent than Fudge, and took a striking action toward Voldemort and his Death Eaters. Scrimgeour assigned Kingsley to the very important job of protecting the Muggle Prime Minister. He was in great danger of being put under the Imperius Curse, which would put all Muggles at risk. Kingsley being very good at blending in with Muggles worked very closely with the Muggle Prime Minister without him even knowing that Kingsley was a wizard. When Scrimgeour met with the Muggle Prime Minister, he said that they had to talk about the Muggle Prime Minister's security, to which the Muggle Prime Minister responded, saying that he was perfectly happy with the security that he had, and that he wasn't getting rid of Kingsley, who he thought was highly efficient and finished his work twice as fast as anyone else. When Scrimgeour said that that was because he was a highly trained wizard in Or, who he had assigned to protect him, the Muggle Prime Minister was shocked, but he still wanted Shacklebolt despite finding out that he was a wizard. Kingsley was kept in that post for about a year and ensured that nothing happened to the Muggle Prime Minister, even with so many threats out there now that Voldemort and his Death Eaters were at large again. During the school year, Kingsley and Lupin met with Dumbledore to discuss some important things, most of all about Harry. He told the two that Harry was the best hope that they had and told them to trust him. They knew that Dumbledore had been training him, but they did not know what the training consisted of. Very shortly after that, Dumbledore was killed in the Battle of the Astronomy Tower. Kingsley went to Hogwarts to attend his funeral, and he sat with many other Order members like Mad-Eye, Lupin, Tonks, and Mr. and Mrs. Weasley. Dumbledore's death turned the tides in the war and put a lot more pressure on Kingsley and the other leading Order members to protect the Wizarding World. The Ministry was being infiltrated by Death Eaters, making Kingsley's already dangerous job even more dangerous. Remembering what Dumbledore had said about Harry being the best hope that they had, he and Arthur visited him at the Dursleys, and he told the Dursleys that they had to go into hiding for their own safety and so that they weren't used as pawns for Death Eaters to get to Harry. The Dursleys took a liking to Kingsley more than any other wizard that they had ever met, saying that he actually behaved like a muggle. Between that, the fact that they saw him on TV guarding the muggle prime minister, and his reassuring and slow deep voice, they took a serious liking to him. They liked him so much in fact, that they wanted to be protected by him, but Harry told Vernon time and time again that he was already watching the muggle prime minister, who to Vernon's displeasure had priority over them. Knowing that when Harry turned 17, the protective charm that his mother gave him would no longer work while he was at the Dursleys. Kingsley worked closely with the Order to create a plan to move Harry from Number 4 Privet Drive to one of the safe Order houses that they had established, one of which was Kingsley's own house that he had offered up for the mission. Kingsley took a night off of guarding the Muggle Prime Minister to help in this mission, and when Harry asked why he wasn't with the Minister, Kingsley responded, saying, You are more important. For their plan, they made there be seven Harrys, each going with a different Order member. Kingsley was paired with Hermione, and they rode a Thestral. When they got in the air, they had the very unpleasant surprise of meeting a whole group of Death Eaters who were not supposed to know that they were taking Harry that day, but clearly somebody informed them of the date change. The two were followed by five Death Eaters, and together, he and Hermione not only evaded them, but injured two and might have killed one. They were then approached by Voldemort himself, who to their great surprise was flying. He left them shortly after approaching, however, knowing that Hermione was not the real Harry. One of the Death Eaters that they faced, Kingsley noticed was Travers, who he knew was supposed to be locked up, and it dawned on him that there had been a mass breakout that the Ministry hushed up, something that Kingsley suspected earlier, but could not confirm until now. 
When they made it to the Weasleys, Kingsley knew that they had been betrayed and showed no pleasure at the sight of any of them. He immediately raised his wand and aimed it at Lupin's chest. The last words Albus Dumbledore spoke to the pair of us. Harry is the best hope we have. Trust him. When Kingsley was convinced it was Lupin, he turned his wand on Harry, but Lupin stopped him, saying that it was him and that he already checked. Kingsley put his wand away, and very out of character, yelled angrily that somebody had betrayed them. When Arthur returned, Kingsley raised his wand at him, making sure it was really Arthur, but Arthur pushed Kingsley out of the way, telling him to back off, desperate to get to his injured son, who had lost an ear during the battle. Kingsley let him go through, and after seeing how upset he was about George, that was proof enough for him that it was the real Arthur. Kingsley, Harry, Lupin, and Ginny stared into the sky, waiting for Bill, Fleur, Mad-Eye, and Mundungus to arrive, and to their relief, Bill and Fleur returned. The group was still very worried about Mad-Eye and Mundungus though, and Kingsley was forced to leave before they got word on their whereabouts, saying that he had to get back to protecting the Muggle Prime Minister and that he should have been there an hour ago. He told the others to let him know when they were back, and then he left. Kingsley was very sad to later hear that Mad-Eye, a man who he looked up to, had been killed by Voldemort himself during the Battle in the Sky. He was very saddened to hear this, but he stuck to his job of protecting the Muggle Prime Minister and did not let this divert his focus from this task at hand. The Borough was made the new Order headquarters, and Kingsley often came over to join them for dinner when he was able to get away from guarding the minister. One day, he and Arthur walked in on Ginny and Harry having a moment, which was quite awkward. Kingsley was unable to attend Bill and Flair's wedding at the borough, and luckily, this turned out to be what saved everyone that did attend. After finding out that Scrimger was killed by Voldemort and his followers, he sent the Patronus to the wedding with a message. In Kingsley's deep and slow voice, he said, The ministry has fallen. Minister of Magic is dead. They are coming. They are coming. Him doing this ensured Harry, Ron, and Hermione's escape, and Lupin later said that thanks to his warning, most of the wedding guests were able to disapparate before the Death Eaters arrived. Kingsley continued working closely with the Order, and was still working with the Ministry. This changed one day, however, after they put a tracker on the name Voldemort, so anytime someone said his name, they knew it was a rebel, and were led right to them. Kingsley said his name one day, and had a bunch of Death Eaters and Snatchers show up, threatening to take him down. They cornered him, and it looked like they had him beat, but Kingsley fought his way out, and he was forced to go on the run. While on the run, Kingsley appeared on the rebel radio broadcast, Potter Watch, under the codename Royal. And while on air, he informed everyone that Muggles did not know what was going on, and encouraged listeners to help protect Muggles. When he was asked what he would say to people saying that wizards come before Muggles, he responded saying that it's one short step from wizards first, to purebloods first, and then to Death Eaters. He then said that we're all human, and said that every human life is worth the same and worth saving. Lee Jordan then said that that was well put, and said that he had his vote for Minister for Magic if they ever get out of this mess. When Kingsley got word that Harry was at Hogwarts and the fight was about to begin, he did not hesitate to make his way to the castle, ready to fight. Kingsley took charge of everyone. Stepping forward, he told those that stayed to fight that a battle plan had been agreed upon between the teachers of Hogwarts and the Order of the Phoenix. He instructed Flitwick, Sprout, and McGonagall to take fighters to the highest towers in the castle, and there, they'd have a great overview and excellent positions to shoot spells down on the invading forces. He then said that himself, Remus, and Arthur were taking groups to the grounds. Kingsley was a leading force in the battle and fought hard, fighting many different Death Eaters and defeating them all. At the end of the battle, he fought Voldemort himself with the help of McGonagall and Slughorn. They wove and ducked around him, giving him their all, but they were unable to finish him off. They were able to keep Voldemort at bay until he watched Bellatrix get killed. He blasted a flailing and writhing Kingsley, Slughorn, and McGonagall through the air. Harry then revealed himself and finished Voldemort off once and for all. After the war ended, Kingsley was made the Minister for Magic, just as Lee Jordan had predicted. He set about ridding the Ministry of Corruption and Discrimination. He ensured the release of all those innocent souls that were locked up in Azkaban by Voldemort, Umbridge, and the Death Eaters. He also banned the use of Dementors to guard the prison, and made sure that they were never used again to torment the opponents of the Ministry. He appointed Harry as the head of the Order Office, taking his former position. He also made Percy Weasley a high-ranking official. 
Kingsley changed the ministry forever, reshuffling the ministry thoroughly and becoming instrumental in the repairs of the Wizarding World following Voldemort's reign of terror. He managed to revolutionize the way the ministry worked, and with the assistance of Hermione Granger, got rid of those laws that were pro-pure blood and discriminating against Muggleborns. After 21 years in office, he stepped down from his post as minister and handed the position over to Hermione, who he worked with very closely for years, making him feel confident for the future of the ministry in her hands. Kingsley was an honest and good-hearted man. He stayed serious most of the time, ensuring that he would never be distracted from his very important job. But when it came down to it, he was always there for those close to him. He was a powerful man, both mentally and physically, but he never let that define who he was, and instead was known for being a calming and reassuring presence who was very likable. He was huge in leading the Battle of Hogwarts and stopping Voldemort, and he will go down in history as one of the best ministers that the ministry has ever seen. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon, which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching, and look out for more great videos on the way.